guys. Welcome to the Free Skier Hangout. We're here with Kyle Decker, broadcasting live from the Free Skier offices in Niwot, Colorado. Um, we're going to be talking with Kyle today about his upcoming film project with Tom Wallish. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you can tweet at us. Henrik, do you want to talk about that really quick? Sure, yeah. We will be fielding questions throughout the conversation. Uh, you can chime in using the hashtag Free Skier Hangout, and uh, Kyle will be happy to answer your questions. So uh, a little bit about Kyle. Uh, he grew up in Ohio, uh, made three movies out there with the Ohio Freestyle team. Um, and I think, if, I, uh, if I'm correct here, he went to the premiere of Level One's High Five, their fifth movie, um, met Josh Berman out there, um, and then was ended up able to uh, be an intern with Level One. Uh, his internship moved on to cinematographer, editor full-time. Um, uh, throughout the production um, into Sunny. Sunny was the last one he worked on and decided to do a leave of absence this year to work uh, with Tom Walsh on the Wallace Project. Um, so Kyle, where are you at? What are you doing? I'm in Flathead Lake, Montana right now, um, and I am just kind of wrapping things up with the Wallace Project. I have like probably another two weeks till I have this thing has to be sent off, and so far so good. So I guess just tell us a little bit um, just what, what is the project? Is it, is it a segment? Is it a, a whole movie? And um, what, what, how's it going to be available? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a little bit more than a segment um, and a little less than a movie. It's probably going to be around eight minutes of like just pretty much pure skiing from Tom. No, no talking, no interviews, just kind of um, basically consolidating all of his footage into one project for the year, and he wanted to uh, really put together something he's happy with where everything's kind of in one place and it comes out on iTunes. It's going to be like a two ninety nine iTunes video versus like a full length film or anything like that. Cool. So. And um, I guess just going back to the beginning, uh, if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about how, I guess how and why this idea came about and then what it actually took to pull the trigger and make it happen. Uh, I think Tom kind of had the idea, like we've sort of talked about it a little bit in the past, like year or so, like clearly he, he there's something that he could do and this is something he wanted to do and just kind of like get everything consolidated into one thing because like his schedule is so intense with like competing and everything, the amount of filming and time he has to film is getting smaller and smaller so like I guess he wanted to have something that worked around his schedule and like when it's go time we kind of made it happen. Nice. And what, I mean, as far as, you know, obviously, basically it's designed to make your own project. I mean, what was that like for him just, you know, as far as working with the other film companies, what were they, what was their response to just, like, saying he wants to kind of do his own thing? I, I think everyone's, like, pretty supportive of it from, you know, some of the main film companies he worked with is Level 1, obviously, 4x9, um, and Field. And I, I don't think there's any any bad blood between any of them, and I think everyone's, like, it's, everyone's supports him and supports watching it, hopefully. Nice. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your time at Level 1? Um, just kind of, we, we mentioned that you were an intern originally and then came on full-time as cinematographer and editor, and maybe just mention um, just what what you learned there that was able to allow you to kind of break off and do your own thing this year. Um, yeah, I've been with Berman pretty much since around... 2006 when I was uh, first intern for what's that? Sh sh long story short, and uh, ever since then I kind of slowly took on more roles. The following year I was editor, and then I picked up editor and filmer, and worked alongside Josh and Friedel for all the years since then. And I mean, so many things you learn from from those. I mean, those guys are pretty dialed in in what they're doing, and and also like just so much stuff you learn with the skiers as you're traveling and kind of you learn a lot through mistakes. Absolutely. Um, what was what was that decision like when um, when you decided to take the leave of absence this year? I mean, it, was, level one? it was tough because like those guys from the skiers to the production crew are pretty much as close, you know, super close friends of mine. So not being able to like work with certain skiers or work with more people as like a team, it was like you know it it became um, you didn't have that whole whole group, and like, I, I mean, it was tough, but uh, 
it was also exciting to uh, I've always wanted to do something like this and something a little different and doing it with Tom was kind of a, a no brainer and just decided I had to give it a shot. Um, that kind of brings up the point of when you're filming a movie with just one athlete, um, what are some of the challenges? I know that you had some other guys there with you and um, what was what was different about just filming one athlete for one movie or for one section? I mean, first and foremost, like if your entire year is dedicated to filming one skier's segment, like which we almost had a little slip up in, in January, but if somebody gets hurt, there's like a lot less room for error. Like Tom uh, tore his MCL in what at Copper at Grand Prix, and like you know, if if he couldn't ski for the rest of the year, like there's not much you can do about the project. You're sort of like, okay, well this is what we have. How can we make this work, or is this salvageable? Does it roll into a two-year thing? And luckily, it bounced back and it worked. But just little things like that that you don't really think about. Like if you're working for a, a film company, you know, ski, somebody gets hurt, it, it sucks. But you could also adapt and like, you know, mm -hmm. rally more people from the crew and and kind of fill seats and stuff. But you know, one person, you're a lot more. Uh, I didn't, guess I didn't realize how how kind of risky that is. But it yeah, kind of puts you in the same shoes as an athlete, like, you know, how how risky it is and, like, you know, one crash can kind of do in your season. Absolutely. Um, so on these trips, you guys, uh, I guess the list here, it looks like you went to Stockholm, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Minnesota, Whistler, uh, Keystone, Mammoth, and Norway. Um, I guess it looks like there are probably a lot of urban trips. Um, looks like a few backcountry trips and some park shoots as well. Um, were you? Did you guys have other skiers there with you? Um, I assume that it takes more than just you and Tom to build all these features and pull them in and stuff. Yeah, um, I'd say the one person that came with us a lot just, I mean, kind of bring his friends that he enjoys skiing with. He brought, he brought McChesney on a lot of trips. Um, Nicholas Erickson, who was a blast to hang out with in Stockholm. Um, John Ware. Like, I mean, urban trips you have to have, like, we, we did do one trip where it was just me, Tom, and Eric Sale, but we had friends in Minnesota helping us. Like, somebody's got to run the winch. Somebody's got to help with some of the way these setups are. Somebody's got to help shovel and, like, kind of get uh, get things dialed. But other than that, you have to – it's important to – not only for, like, logistics and shoveling and just – it's it's good to have someone there. It's good to have someone say, hey, uh, trim a little speed off of that or – just someone for the skier to talk to, and like, it's some of the things. There's not a clear answer on how it's going to work out. Yeah, it's a social. It's a social thing too. It seems like. Yeah. Cool. And what? Uh, so, so obviously Timmy and and where and um, Nicholas probably logged some shots. Where are those ending up? Those end up uh, like mostly level one, or um, some of them will go like four by nine level one, kind of like whoever they're filming with, and. Um, kind of works out for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, do you want to uh, take a Twitter question? Sure. We, uh, we've got a couple people chiming in here on the twits. Um, John Legault. Let's see. Thomas Robinson. Mario. Neil. All kinds of people. Tom Robinson's got a good one. He wants to know, why did Wally and crew pass up the down, flat down in Providence and, quote, you know the rail I'm talking about. You've been there, end quote. Yeah, I think uh, Tim McChesney dropped an Instagram of that, and it was just a massive, massive double kink. We were at a at a disaster feature, and you kind of walk off into the woods, and you can see, like, it was, like, so big that, I mean, sure, it's it could be doable, but, um, and I'm sure there's a couple people out there that could do it and would do it, but uh, I guess it kind of passed because you'd probably be going about, 100 miles an hour into the flat of this double king. But it's doable, and there's a couple couple of kids out there that definitely can do it, but kind of passed on it. <laughs> so I guess that. you'd have to ask that question to, to Cheddar and Wally. Yeah, sometimes you got to make that call, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I guess another question we have is um, <clears throat> what are some of the, obviously, I mean, you and Tom have been filming for a long time. What are some of the pros of filming with Tom? I mean, obviously, I, I can come up with a few off the top of my head, and I also want to hear... What are some of like the difficulties in filming with Tom? Um, I don't know. The pros I get I think are like fairly obvious. Like first obvious he's a good friend of mine, we get along. 
Um, he's clearly, I think, one of the most talented skiers out there. And outside of that, like, there's a lot of super talented kids out there, but, like, this kid works as hard as it needs to take to, like, get the job done. Like, which, you know, working with someone like that, like, if you are working with someone that intense, like, it pushes you on, like, a whole other level. And, yeah, I guess we're on the same page, like, just going through, like, revisions on the editing and stuff. Like, spent so much time with him throughout the season that, like, I know what he wants, and he knows what I need need to get. So, like, working with somebody like that, it's it's a piece of cake to like make something that we're both happy with. Like, we're not on different ends of how things are turning out. So, that's a pro. And I don't know about too many cons other than like maybe what we mentioned before about how you know if there's a you know if there's one skier and you run into any kind of uh, risk with injury or whatever where kind of shuts out your season and his, his as well but other than that like um, I mean honestly I haven't even gotten in any major uh, no major arguments or anything like pretty much get along pretty well I've heard, Tom, you, maybe, think, yeah. I've heard you maybe uh, gets the shot too quick and you have to ask him to do it a couple more times is that true? it, it can be true for sure he gets it pretty quick sometimes you make a uh, Last year for Sonny, he was doing like a, a right 450 onto a down rail and me horn back, and we were all making bets on uh, how many times from the first time he touches the rail, he's going to get his right four on, and I think we bet like 10 or more, and he got it in like the sixth time he touched the rail kind of thing, Dang. which is pretty impressive, and I think he feeds off that too. Like, Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess when you guys, I'm assuming this idea was been in the making for a while, but when you decide to actually do it, how much, I guess, for you as a filmmaker and Tom as an athlete, how much of the, how much was it, of it was all in your head ahead of time, and, like, how much pre-visualization did you, like, do for what you wanted the project to be, or was it kind of more just go for it and see how, see how it works? I mean, we definitely, like, I went out to Utah at first once I kind of, like, fully, fully was on board and just kind of sat down with him and figured out, um, Mostly, like, with any ski film, you figure out a couple of the major, like, trips, like, you want to go on, and everything else is kind of fill in the blanks depending on snow. Maybe there's snow in Minnesota, maybe there's not. And uh, I wanted to get an idea of, like, you know, making this thing of what, what he wanted out of this. Like, did he want to be talking in it? Did he want to do whatever? And he basically just says he wants to make a, a segment with all really banger shots and no talking, no filler, and uh, yeah. So it kind of, that made it a lot easier and like, okay, well we need to focus on action and not like any kind of like major storytelling or anything like that. So went out and let him do his thing and I think it worked out. Nice. I'm going to chime in with a couple questions. Of all the various world traveling you did this past season, was there a standout <coughs> trip that uh, you look back on as being uh, perhaps the best of the bunch? I mean, I did two trips to Scandinavia. Um, I'd say they're both my favorite. One, uh, went to Norway and linked up with the Field Productions boys and did like a little collab shoot, which I've never been to Norway and it's beautiful. And then also went to Stockholm for a jib trip and uh, it's fun there, change the scenery. You don't get busted like at all. People are happy about what you're doing skiing around on the streets and got to hang out with Nicholas Erickson, who's hilarious. For sure. So. Yeah, that's cool. The field guys in particular, I remember um, I met them the year that they did their first movie. It was a long time ago and was actually uh, filming with them a bit for that, and it's fun to see how far they've come along. Um, those guys are absolutely killing it. Um, for, for the gear nerds out there, you want to tell us um, a little bit about the uh, equipment you're using, do you find that you are um, switching cameras between, say, the backcountry and an urban environment? Uh, can you elaborate on that? Um, I'm shooting with uh, Sony FS700 and a Canon 5D, and I'd say for the most part, like, you're pretty much using the same lenses for both those cameras, and you're always going to bring this Sony in your backpack, and just whether or not, I mean, it's not a big deal to bring the 5D body along in your bag, so I guess pretty much both for uh, 
for most shoots, it just depends on the you know, backcountry versus urban, whether how many bells and whistles you bring out. Like, do you bring the glad cam, dolly, boom, lights, generate, you know, it, it all kind of goes from there. But I'd say, like, whatever's in your camera pack for the most part, like, your raw camera body and basic lenses kind of go with you everywhere. For sure. And uh, given all the fancy stuff you're using, that might transition into a nice question we had from um, Mary O. Ski, arguably skiing's biggest super fan. She wants to know if you consider this your finest work, and will we see another solo project with Wally? Um, I don't know if there's another solo project with Wally, but uh, that hasn't been talked about. But um, I don't know about my fine. I'm I'm happy with a lot of things from from level one, but I mean, I guess yeah, I'm I'm pretty pretty happy how it's turning out. Like I wasn't wasn't fully sure going into the season, but like um, been bouncing a couple rough drafts back and forth with Wallace and definitely really, really happy with how she's turning out. So Awesome. And then uh, I'm sure people are anxious to know, I don't think you can discuss the exact release date. I believe Tom is going to do that on his uh, social feeds. But um, can you give us any sort of idea about when we can expect a trailer and the full release? Yeah. Trailer is going to be early August, and full release will be... Um, down to August. Very good, very good. And uh, going along with the 299 iTunes format that you guys had discussed, um, is what's the biggest challenge you think, um, sort of adopting that format versus going sort of a more traditional route? Um, biggest challenge I'd say is like, if you're if you're making a film and have multiple athletes, you can source. Uh, more sponsors or like there, there's a few more sponsors to to kind of to, to, to get like uh, you know Tom's Tom's big sponsors to kick in and like support a project like this because it's it's not cheap to go out and, and film with uh, you know in the type of places you're filming all season and and to do it all for one second segment is uh, like I don't know if the 299 would actually you know, pay for that type of travel for Tom and I, but, um, yeah. We'll see, you'll see how it goes. That's going anywhere, yeah. Absolutely. But it's, yeah, we'll see where, we'll see where it goes. Dif different model, and uh, kind of curious, curious myself how it works out, but I'm happy with the project, and I think I and kids will enjoy it. Cool. What, uh, what other movies are you looking forward to seeing this year, besides, of course, your own? Um, Obviously, Level One's movie. Like, first time I watched the trailer in so long that like, it's pretty exciting to watch. Like, you see all the skiers and you you know absolutely nothing of what's going on. Then you, uh, I don't know, Fields, Stepped, Four by Nine, Sherpa. I mean, all of them to be honest. Like, everyone's got slowly throughout the years kind of has their own like personal touch on why that movie's good, and it's not like one movie's better than the other, but obviously you can't compare, like, you know, one to the other, which is which is getting good. Like, there's there's a lot more unique styles going on now. Absolutely. Do you want to tell us um, maybe just one of the highlight trips from the year? Maybe uh, a couple of anecdotes of something that happened on one of the trips you went on this year? I'll butt in before he answers. I remember... Uh, Photographer and free skier contributor Bryn Hughes uh, shared a story on our website um, not too long ago with a banger gallery. Thank you, Bryn, if you're watching. Um, and he also touched on a overshoot scenario where Tom uh, sent a rather large stunt nearly to his death. Um, do you want to touch on that? And can you tell us were there any other uh, near misses for Tom along the way? Um. Yeah. Do we. Uh... That was actually, we went out with Bryn, we went up to Whistler, and uh, Bryn showed Tom and I around, and uh, blast hanging out with him, but uh, yeah, Tom hit this jump that was uh, pretty, pretty big, and he, uh, we, we, we were talking about speed, and this is one of those situations where if you have a skier there, like, you can kind of, like, kind of, kind of get the discussion more, but he, he gave it a... Uh, he let it rip a little harder than he thought. I think I hear an airplane going on over there. But uh, 
<laughs> he let her he let her rip uh, a little harder than uh, than he expected and overshot this thing going like he went like 150 feet. This by the by far the biggest like jump overshoot I've ever <laughs> seen. Wow. And he was or ever shot I should say and like he you know he he thought his thought he tweaked his knee a little again but turned out it was just like kind of strained another little muscle in there but was fine took a couple days off and, and went back at her and actually rebated the jump and got his speed a little more dialed the next time and um, landed pretty much everything he wanted to land after that are we gonna see the uh, the overshoot in the film yes I'm gonna put in the credits for sure awesome and uh, I wonder if Twitter questions yeah, sure. I was just going to say, I mean, it's probably just one of um, many sort of ridiculous instances along the way and making it a special project for you guys, and we're stoked to check it out. Um, we have, uh, we're feeling some questions on Facebook as well. Um, Max Lang is curious about a camo jacket that you were wearing in a photo we recently huh. shared on our Instagram. He wants to know... Where can I get that jacket? Can you uh, hook up Max Lang with an answer? Yeah, it's uh, the camo North Face. I think it's the kryptonite jacket. Have that. Um, it's kind of like a shell. Well, there you go, Max. It is TNF Check it kryptonite. Out. And um, let's see. We can turn back to the twits. And, uh, you know, uh, at Jed is hot. Twitter user wants to know, um, he wants to know about Tom's personality, what's the ups and downs of working with him. We always, we talked about, obviously, the, the ups of working with Tom. We sort of joked that maybe the real um, downside of working with him is that he lands his tricks too quickly, but um, maybe we'll elaborate. Is there, um, you know, can you tell us what is actually the worst part of working with Tom? Can we get some dirt on it? I honestly, first off, I don't have too much, and second off, he's probably listening, and I can't, like, <laughs> not going to throw him under the bus. No, but I, there's not, it's seriously, like, it's pretty mellow working with them, like, I mean, I think if he wasn't that, I mean, if he, there's not, like, much dirt, or he's not, like, a, like, a, he's not, like, a bad guy, otherwise he wouldn't be where he is in skiing, I think, like, he's a likable dude, and good skier, and it's one of the reasons he is where he is. Nice. You want to read one there? Yeah. Um, this one, uh, I guess, from Thomas Robinson on Twitter, he says, how does a kid from Ohio end up becoming a pro filmer? Do you have any insight for the uh, people who want to be filming skiing for a living? Um, yeah. I, I, would, I would say, uh, I mean, not, I wouldn't give him a, it's not a good career path, but no. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I don't know, I mean, I didn't even plan on doing it, I was just filming my friends like everyone else does, and just kept doing it and doing it, and worked hard at it, and didn't really, I mean, it was just like fun to me, and it just kept doing it, and somehow every year, like, something new, or like, would get to a different level, or work with more talented people, and at some point, Filming with my friends in Ohio, and I'm filming with Tom Wallace, and it wasn't like a direct path. It was just like I continue to do what I love doing, and I mean, work hard at what you like, and found to continue to do it. Excellent. Um, do you have any there? Yeah, there were some folks chiming in. Lots of questions, but sort of um, stuff we've already covered. So sorry for not addressing your question, but um, hopefully you found an answer throughout the conversation. What a, I guess, were you the solo filmer on all these trips, or was there ever, did you ever have another filmer, or was it kind of lock-off angles, or how'd that work? For the most part, yeah, it was me, and then set up, like, a second camera for lock-off angles, but, like, bigger trips, like, you know, we went to Sweden, and I wanted to have a, a second angle there, and had uh, Andreas Olofsson, um, one of our friends that lives in uh, in the area, he came out and shot, and you know, a couple of these shoots, like like the the field shoot, for example, like I swapped shots with them, basically gave them all my shots, got got to use their shots, and I mean, 
yeah, it's, some shoots you need a second angle, like a park shoot. It's it's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to just do like one dude because it's good to have same takeoff and landing at the same track. But um, there's definitely like times that we brought in some friends and got some second angles. Excellent. For sure. And then I'm looking now. We're um, we're past the 25 minute mark, so I wonder maybe we'll try and wrap it up here. But um, real quickly, uh, what's going to be the easiest way for people to find the film once it's released? Should they follow Tom? Is there a website they can check out? Where do people go? Uh, they should follow Tom. It's going to drop on iTunes. Um, dropping the teaser on the ESPN and just social media kind of we'll, we'll get we'll work on getting the word out awesome and uh, you got any other questions for for the I think man that's it Kyle I uh, just want to thank you for coming on and talking with us we're all really excited to hear about the project and hopefully for the listeners out there we can uh, we opened up a little bit more information to you and uh, yeah thanks for thanks for coming on today enjoy the Flathead Lake living cool take it easy all right, good chat with you, bud. See ya. Adios. And uh, real quickly, we'll say um, thanks all for tuning in. This is uh, Free Skier Hangouts, and we will be uh, bringing you more of these um, in the not-too-distant future. So stay tuned. And um, if you have a friend who happened to miss the broadcast, it will be posted uh, shortly after the conversation comes to a close here at freeskier.com slash videos. So uh, you can direct your friends there who happen to miss the conversation. And again, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.